you. Thank you, Casey. And as Casey said, I want to try to make it just short and sweet because I expect a lot of questions and I'll try to answer as many questions as we can. And I know she also said that um, we'll try to answer them, get back to you if we don't get to your questions. So I just want to make a guide for your summer suit, shoe selection. And I want to talk probably a lot more on sandals than any other shoes. A little bit of a history of the shoes. Shoes have been around since 7,500 BC. Um, the Romans wore sandals that are very similar to today's non-supportive sandals, right? They were very flat. They were just like a piece of leather and they were almost like walking on the ground with no support. Modern shoes that, have, that we know of today were produced around the 17th century. And of course, there's been many different styles and shapes of shoes over the years. I'm gonna talk a little bit of what our feet do. Our feet actually carry our whole body weight. So with this pandemic, patients that's come in and said, well, I gained some weight and all of a sudden my feet are hurting. So I'll evaluate. And a lot of times it has to do with the shoes that they're wearing, just not supportive enough to carry the weight of our body. They play a vital role in just supporting our feet, but not only about like protecting us from external dangers, right? Outside glass, rocks, pebbles, sticks, splinters. We know that our, our shoes also are, help us support us, right? So during this pandemic, what was happening is a lot of patients were working from home. They weren't wearing shoes. They were coming in after two or three months and saying, my feet hurt me. They have never been hurting me this bad before. Well, what's the difference? Well, I'm working from home. I'm either wearing shoe, shoes that aren't supportive, slippers, or sandals or just plain barefoot or socks. So some people were even exercising at home with no shoes on at all. So I go to the gym, I'll exercise at the gym, I wear my sneakers, right? But when I come home, do you take them off and exercise? Well, if you have your own gym, you should still be wearing shoes in the house when you're exercising. It gives us extra support. It protects us from all the pounding that we do. Most important factor that what our shoes do is they support us. They also protect us, but the most important factor is that they, they support us. So what type of shoes should, be, should you be in? I always tell patients it all depends on what you do. How active are you? What are you going to be using these shoes for? Are you going to be walking? Are you going to be exercising? Are you going to be hiking in the mountains or just taking a hike in a park? And then you have to take a look at the patient's foot and say, what kind of pathologies do they have? Do they have bunions? Do they have hammer toes? Do they have a neuroma? Do they have a history of plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendonitis? And then the last thing people always want to look at is the appearance of the shoes. How nice do they look when I put them on? Do they look like I'm wearing orthopedic shoes or do, are they fashionable? And I always tell patients that appearance shouldn't really matter much, right? We should really think about the pathology of our what within our feet, and we really should think about how much support these shoes. So some people need more control and some people need more support. So there's different types of shoes gives more control or sneakers. What gives more support is a good shoe with a nice arch. So most people do not think that shoes the proper shoes are important. They just wanna get a pair of shoes that look nice and they can wear, especially in the summertime. I think that's the most important thing we should be thinking about is getting the proper shoe for our feet. If you have diabetes, arthritis, or plantar fat atrophy, that's when the fat on the bottom of your feet is no longer there. So those type of patients need more support in their shoes. So it's very important if you have any of these pathologies to think about wearing a more supportive shoe, not a flat shoe with no support. And as I always, when I always do lectures, whether it's on a specific type of deformity or pathology, or even just on shoe wear, footwear I find is one of the major causes of patients' foot problems. What is the perfect shoe? So there's not really one shoe that is perfect for everyone. Feet come in different sizes and shapes. So some people have flat feet, some people have high arch feet. So those patients are gonna be in different types of shoes. What might be good for my foot type might not be good for you. So when we ask patients to go out and look for shoes, again, we're gonna ask them to look for a supportive shoe that feels 
good on your particular foot type. Again, if you have a high arch foot, it's gonna feel a little different than a flat foot. You also wanna look at the shoe and say, is it gonna cause more damage to my foot or is it gonna cause my pathology to be worse? And what I mean by that is, is the shoe too small? Is it too large? Is it not wide enough? When you go to put the shoe on, you wanna make sure that it's fit is proper. You want to look at the very end of the longest toe. So some patients, the big toe is the longest toe. Sometimes it's the second toe. When you put your foot in that shoe, you want to stand up and you want to take your thumb and you want to find that longest toe and put your thumb at the end of that longest toe. You want to see that the, the space between that longest toe and the end of your shoe should be the width of your thumbnail right? So you want to just the thumbnail. You don't want to look at the woman who has high, like have very long nails. You want to just look at the pink part of the nail. The other thing I'll tell patients is put your shoe on the ground, stand over top of the shoe, and put your foot on top of the shoe. If the shoe is coming over the sides of the shoe, then that shoe is too narrow for you. You're going to put your foot in that shoe. It's going to squeeze that foot and you're going to have problems. When you go to like better shoe stores, Macy's, uh, Nordstrom's, any shoe store in the mall or Benjamin Lavelle, you're going to find that they use this device called the Brannock device. When you get measured for your feet, you ask them to measure you in this Brannock device. It's a metal device. One side is for the right side, one side is for the left side. Have them measure you standing up and you want the width and the length. You wanna do this at the end of the day when your feet do swell and your feet are tired from standing and walking all day long. And that goes again to the correct size. When is the last time we've been measured? You have to ask yourself, most people will say to me, I haven't been measured since I was in high school or grade school. So this is a perfect time. If you haven't been measured in a while, go ahead and go to a shoe store that has that device. Ask them to measure you. You'll be surprised. Most of these patients are coming in and saying, I got myself measured and I've been wearing the wrong shoe size and the wrong width. And why is this important? Because if you're, if you're buying shoes that are too large for you, you can trip on them. The ends of the of the shoe can catch on steps as you're going up and down steps. They can catch on the sidewalk or the curbs. And if they're too tight, your shoes are gonna, shoes are gonna cramp the foot and you're gonna have a lot of pressure points all over the foot. Proper fit. When I talk to patients about the proper fit, you wanna try on a different variety of shoes, right? So I might be able to wear a Merrill but you might not be comfortable in a Merle shoe. So you might have to go into the Keen shoes. And I'm gonna show some pictures of these different shoes. You wanna try, you might say to me, I've always worn Merrells and all of a sudden my feet are hurting. You might have to now try a different brand of shoe. Always make sure you try them on on both feet because most of us have one foot that's a little larger. So always try it on the larger foot to make sure it feels fine. Also, different manufacturers have their own size range. So sometimes you'll go into one particular shoe and you're a seven, and you might go into a different brand of shoe and you're seven and a half. So it's important that you try different brands and make sure you try them on. Always tell patients that the shoe must feel good when you buy them. If you buy them and they don't feel good, I'm sorry, if you try them on and they don't feel good, then don't buy them. There should never be a break-in period with a pair of shoes. And I always recommend, again, going at the end of the day when our feet are a little swollen and so that you make sure that they feel fine all day long. And I always talk about like knowing the difference between a good and bad footwear. That's really important. Patients will come in and say, well, this is a good pair of shoes. I paid over $100 for them. Aren't they good because I paid a lot of money for them? And a lot of times what you're doing is you're paying for the name of that shoe. And there's a lot of companies out there that make a ballet type of shoe and you're paying over $100 for them. Well, that ballet type of shoe has no support. 
So that's a bad shoe, even though you paid a lot of money for it. If you have a history of plantar fasciitis, one of the things I see people come in, in the fall after wearing flip-flops all summer long, they end up having a new case of plantar fasciitis. So if you've ever had plantar fasciitis, it's really important in the summertime to make sure you wear supportive shoes. There are companies that make a good pair of flip-flops, and I'll show you those, those flip-flops that will help support the foot and help that plantar fasciitis from, from preventing it from returning. Summer footwear. So now we're just going into like some of the summer footwear. There's also, we could talk about winter footwear, but I, we're gonna kind of keep this short. And if you have questions, we can answer them then. But some of the most stylish summer footwear can cause foot and ankle problems. Again, I just talked about plantar fasciitis, but if you have any tendonitis, if you have a history of stress fractures, you have hammer toes or bunions or neuromas, these very stylish footwear that's very narrow are gonna aggravate these existing problems. You wanna avoid soft, flimsy, flimsy sandals that have no support. So I always tell patients, pick up that shoe. Can it bend in half? Can the forefoot touch the heel of the foot? I call that a taco, right? You can bend that shoe like a taco. That's not a good shoe for you. That's no support, and you're gonna have major problems in your heels and your arches normally. Keep talking about that built-in arch support. You're gonna start looking for shoes that have a nice arch support. If you're gonna wear like a wedge that has an arch support, you wanna make sure that there's an ankle strap on it that prevents spraining your ankles. And again, you wanna make sure that it's the proper length and the width. So I'm gonna keep this, this slide up for a little bit and maybe we can get it out to you, but these are some of the sandals that I recommend with good arch support. Most of these you can either find in uh, a better shoe store. So Nordstrom's, Macy's, uh, there's Benjamin Lavelle if you live in the Glen Mills area. Uh, in Glen Eagle Plaza, they, the Benjamin Lavelle will sell most of these. Also, um, Benjamin Lavelle is in Center City. I also want you to know that none of these shoe stores are actually sponsoring me for this at all. And I'm not getting any pay, payment for all of this. So I don't want you to think I'm being sponsored by um, these shoe companies. But most of these, and I'm gonna show you some pictures, have a good arch support. They've got good soles. If you look at these shoes here, if you look at them, the common thread here is the arch support. So if you look at the one on the left-hand side on the top, that's a Birkenstock. So Birkenstocks have been around for a long time. And recently they've um, noted, they've kind of started making more, um, more style. So it's not just the simple cork. As you look at here, this has a nice sole. It has cork, which absorbs some of the shock and it has a nice arch support. This is the Shaco. This, this one, the Shaco here and the Keen and Tevez, they are good for if you're going to the beach or if you're going to be around a pool. It's again, a nice arch support there. And the straps can are waterproof. So if you have to get into the water, especially our diabetics, they do dry up and they do last a long time. I have a pair of Tevas that have been at least 10, 15 years old. And I wear them to the beach to give me good support in the sand, protect myself from the hot sand. And then also if I, if I happen to go into the water, they dry and they don't ruin, get ruined. The other shoes that are really good are Merrells. They have become more fashionable over time, but here's a Merrell hiking shoe. Again, you see that there's a nice support strap. There's a nice support in the arch, a nice support in the arch for the Merrill women's. The one on the right-hand side, the pink one, that's a Nayat. Nayats also make shoes for the winter time. They also make boots in the winter time and they have sandals. Their shoes that are, the shoes have this insert that you can take in and out. So if you have a non-supportive pair of shoes, you can sometimes take that insert out and put it in those shoes. The sandals, their support stays in there. But as you can see, if you have someone with an Achilles tendonitis, this has a wedge, which helps lift that Achilles tendonitis, excuse me, lifts that heel, Achilles tendon, and prevents that pull on that heel and gives you some relief of pain. The, the two ones on the bottom on the right hand side, they are the Vionics. That Vionics, this, the one in the middle, the black 
flip flop. That was first. That was the first shoe. Um, that was invented by a podiatrist who was looking at all these flip flops out there, and patients were coming in with a lot of problems with their feet after wearing flip flops. They decided to make this this nice flip flop, nice arch support, nice cushioning. And if you look at the forefoot, it has a rocker bottom in the forefoot. You see the rocker, most of these shoes also have rocker bottoms. So if you have problems in the forefoot, you have an aroma, or if you have metatarsalgia, or if you have no fat pad, this allows you to pulse off of that foot and the shoes taking more of the pressure. The one on the right-hand side on the bottom is a bionic sandal. And if you go online, bionic has a whole line of shoes, sandals, and boots online. They also make sneakers. I um, actually like, if you're going to be using sneakers, I'd like you to go to a sneaker store to buy sneakers, like a running store. They're a little bit more supportive, but Vionics makes a good product for shoes, boots, and sandals. We have the UFOs, which if you notice recently, there's a lot of commercials for the UFOs. UFOs first were made for runners, the long distance runners. And what was happening is they were coming out of running the marathon and they were taking their shoes off and just being barefoot. UFOs came up with this recovery sandal. And what you look at these again, there's a nice arch support and cushioning to that area. And they came up and said, well, you know, if we can make this great recovery shoe for our runners, let's start making sandals and flip flops for every day. The next one on the right hand side, that's an Allegra. They also make um, shoes, boots, and that's a good product. Again, if you want to be a little more stylish, we have a little wedge and again, a rocker bottom. So it's going to help you if you have any forefoot problems. It's also going to help you if you have any plantar fasciitis or Achilles tendon problems. The bottom two, that's Mephistas. And most of these shoe companies also have men. I know I'm showing mostly female shoes, but most do also come in men's styles. The Mephisto here, you see a wedge. And with the wedge, they have a nice support for the ankle to make sure you don't roll your ankle. It's a little higher than the Allegra, but it gives you support. It gives you the cushioning that you need. The one in the middle, is a Mephesta for a male. And again, if you look at that, a nice support in the arch, nice cushioning in the heel. And the one on the right-hand side, that's a Bayo. Again, if you look at the Bayo and you look at the Neon, they kind of look a lot alike. So it all depends on what style you like. Sometimes a Bayo has nicer, nicer you know, dress sandals. And then there's the keen sandal, which I like using a lot for patients who spend a lot of time at the beach, or if they're going to be using sandals to go hiking or walking. You, if, the keens have a nice wide forefoot. So I like to use them on patients who have hammer toes or bunions. And the one on the left-hand side is a teos. Um, those you're really going to probably find most of the time online. But if you look at them, they've got nice arch support again. They have cork to absorb the shock and they have a nice ankle support. And then I wanted to just show you some non-supportive shoes. And these are the, the different type of shoes people usually come in August or September and say, this is the shoe that I've been wearing all summer. I can't understand. I've always worn these shoes. I've never had problems, but all of a sudden I have problems with plantar fasciitis or I have problems with my forefoot hurting. If you look at this is, you know, the common flip-flop that everybody normally wears at the beach or around the pool. It has no arch support and it's very thin. This is this one in the middle. It's kind of like what our, our early Romans used to wear. It was just a piece of leather. And then they put leather to kind of keep that piece of leather on their ankle and their feet. If you look at that, it's very flat, no support at all. Patients usually come in with either plantar fasciitis or metatarsalgia or neuroma pain. I talked about that ballet shoe on the right hand, upper right hand side. If you look at that shoe, you can bend it in half. So that gives absolutely no support. And I know a lot of women like wearing that in the summertime with a cute skirt, but it just doesn't give you enough support. They're also very narrow in the forefoot. So if you have hammer toes or bunions or neuroma, that's gonna aggravate that. 
the one on the very bottom in the middle, that again, I see a lot of women come in and they're wearing that shoe all summer long with a cute skirt and they don't understand why their feet hurt. If you look at this sole right here, you're actually walking on the floor, whether it's the floor inside or the concrete outside. And that, those, that shock gets absorbed by your foot instead of the shoe. So you really want that shoe to absorb the shock. Wearing these shoes here on this slot, this slide is not going to give you any support at all. And you're going to have a lot of problems. A lot of times I'll see patients come in with this type of shoe on the bottom right-hand side. If you look at that, again, that sole is very thin, a nice thin high heel. You're putting all the pressure on the forefoot and it's squeezing your toes. And then that design is also squeezing. So if you're swelling up at the end of the day, you're gonna have a lot of these marks from the straps and you're gonna have a lot of pain. So. In closing, I just want to give like a footwear checklist, right? So when you when you decide this is the, this is the shoe I want to wear, I want you to put it on. I want you to walk around the store. See, does it feel like it's slipping? If your your foot slipping inside the shoe, do you have too much motion in the shoe, which, which is bad? You want to say that's not the right shoe for me. Is there any excess pressure or any part of the foot, meaning the toes or the sides of your foot? then that again, isn't the proper shoe for you. It's probably not wide enough. Are your toes cramping in the, in the shoe? If they're cramping, that means it's probably too short. So it's not the proper length. No like localized tight spots over areas of foot deformity. So again, that goes back to that number two. It's, is there, do you have a bunion? And do you feel that this, the pressure from the shoe is causing more pain to the bunion? Again, that's not the right shoe for you. Does it feel stable when you're walking? Did you get a wedge and there's no strap around it? Do you feel like you're gonna roll over? That's not the right shoe. And the last one is you want a well padded sole and a built in arch support. So you wanna make sure that the sole is not thin and you wanna make sure that there's a nice arch support in that shoe or sandal. Remember when you when you go out to buy shoes, the best shoe for you is the shoe that is comfortable and proper for the activity that you're gonna use that shoe in. Again, are you using it to go to the beach? Are you using it to go out and walk for exercise? Are you gonna go out and hike? Are you gonna to go to a park and do a lot of hills? If you have a history of plantar fasciitis, I know I said this earlier, you wanna stay away from non-supportive flip-flops. We know that Bionics and UFOs makes a good flip-flop with a nice support. If you can't find the Bionics out in a store, they are online and there is one store that I know of, which is in Jersey, that does, um, it's, it's just the Bionics store, it's in Marlton. They have all of the Bionic shoes there but also online, you can get a lot of different bionic shoes. If anybody has any questions? Thank you, Dr. Gikas. That had a lot of great content, a lot of good information that we can take home with us. Um, there are some questions already. Uh, we have a couple minutes we can review. Um, again, if anyone has any questions, we'll try to get to them all, but if we can't, um, it's only because we got to stop at a certain time. So first question, um, is it best to measure shoe sizes with orthotics inserted? I always say yes, because you want to, when you're going out to buy shoes, right? And sandals don't accommodate orthotics, right? So that's one of the biggest things when patients come in and they're getting fitted for orthotics, I will tell them they do not fit in sandals. So when, if you do wear orthotics, you want to take that pair of orthotics with you. You want to go out and see what shoes can accommodate that orthotic because you want to make sure it fits in that shoe. You don't want to make sure that you put the shoe in and you're not walking out of that shoe because that orthotic will lift you up a little bit. And were there any sandals that you uh, specified for people who wear orthotics? So again, 
I think I just touched base on that, but orthotics cannot fit in sandals that are open, right? So you put the orthotic in the sandal, if you know, look at all, any of these sandals earlier, they do not accommodate sandals. So a lot of your better sandals, like the Nayots, um, the Bionics, the Ufos, they have a nice arch support, so you don't necessarily need that, right? The Merrells, if you buy a Merrell sneaker or a hiking shoe, a lot of times you can fit that orthotic in. Great. Um, <clears throat> that's it for now. I am going to uh, just repeat the appointment line. Um, it's a VIP line for you guys if you need to make an appointment. That number is 610-480-6584. Um, if you need to schedule an appointment with Dr. Gikis, she is out of our Brim Mar, Glen Mills, Media, and South Philly office. Um, and I don't see anything. I have, I have one more question. I just saw it. Says, I ordered Skechers washable slingback orthopedic slide sport sandals. Have not received yet. What do you think? So I, I don't like to badmouth any shoe, but some Skechers are better than others. I have found that the Skechers that have the memory foam, they bottom out too quickly. And so you're paying a lot of money for the memory foam, but they don't necessarily last a long time. Um, I would like this, they're washable. I would say they're probably not as supportable as support as any of these other shoes that we spoke about earlier. So if you like the Skechers, you might want to look at a Merle's or Keen, because I do believe that they also kind of make a sneaker with a better arch support. Um, of UFOs are the spelling of UFOs is O O F O S. Uh, recently, there's been a lot of commercials on TV about the UFOs. Um, sneakers for people with midfoot arthritis, and I'm trying to get to answer this real quick. So, sneakers for mid for people with midfoot arthritis. Um, if you go to a um, running store, they have a lot of shoes for midfoot arth arthritis. You want to look at a rock or bottom shoe. So a lot of like New Balance, um, Brooks, Saucony, even Hoka's, they have a rock or bottom shoe and the forefoot's a little up a little bit. So it helps you kind of roll over that midfoot arthritis. Thank you. Dr. Gikas, could you pull up the brand list again? Yep, yes, that. this yeah. recording will be available. I will, I will be sending it out probably in the next couple of days. There we go. And I, just to let everybody know, these are, you know, lists of, of shoes that I recommend. There, there might be some that I've missed. Sometimes patients come in and say, hey, I found this, you know, I was over, you know, in this state or I was overseas. What do you think about this? So it, it's, these are the brands I highly recommend. But if you have a, a shoe and you look at the shoe, and again, look at that arch support. Is it flat? You know, if there's no support inside the shoe, then that's not, that's not a supportive shoe. And you also want to look at the sole. Is it very flat? Is it just a piece of rubber or is it just a piece of leather? That's not supportive. And um, what was your recommendation for the best shoes with wide foot, narrow heel, bunions, and hammer toes? <laughs> oh, so so that is, each person's like very individual, but I think, you know, a lot of women are not going to be happy with me, but the Mephistos and Keen make a very wide, um, I have that picture up here on the up at the right hand side. And that's just one sample. They do have a lot of different shoe styles and samples. Um, but if you look at that, they're nice and wide in the forefoot and they're a little deeper and that will accommodate that bunion and those hammer toes. Can you review the thumb rule for fit? Okay, so for the thumb rule, what you wanna do is you wanna put the shoe on, you wanna stand up, and then what you wanna do is you wanna find your longest toe. So it's either gonna be the large toe or the second toe. Once you find that large toe, you wanna take your thumb and you wanna put the end of your thumb on the end of the toe. And then you want the end of your nail to be at the end of the sole, right? So you want the end of your, the thumb here, you want the nail to be here. So I'm sorry, I don't have a picture of that. I wish I had a picture of that, but it's, you take the thumb, you take the longest toe, put the thumb 
at the end of the longest toe. If you're at the end of the shoe and your nail is hanging over the shoe, that's too short for you. Then you're in the wrong shoe. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Geekes. I think that's all we have. Does anyone make a good baby shoe? <laughs> So, you know, and that's a good question. That is a good question. <laughs> right, with, you know, my kids are all older, but I, you know, they're, so if you're looking for a sneaker, a lot of the better sneaker companies are making sneakers now for children, like New Balance, Asics, um, Brooks and Saucony's are making them. I do believe that Merrill's does make shoes like sandals for children. Um, Birkenstocks, are becoming very popular for the children. So they're making them in smaller sizes. Great. I don't know if that answers that. Okay, last question. What shoe do you recommend to accommodate orthotics? So shoes that accommodate orthotics, um, well, it depends. If you're wearing sneakers, most sneakers will accommodate orthotics. You're better running sneakers. For shoes, I do find that if you, Look at the Merrells, uh, the Nayots. Again, I don't have shoes. I have all sandals because it's summer. But the Nayots make, they're, they're deep enough that you can take their orthotic out, their insert out, and put them that your own orthotic in. Merrells and Keens also do that. Um, so a lot of times, Mephistos and Echoes also, you can take that insert out and put your orthotic in. Great. Thank you, Dr. Gikas. I really appreciate you taking the time. I appreciate everybody that uh, jumped on here on uh, midday. Um, I hope you got some good information out of here. And again, I will be sending this recording out within the next couple of days for you to review. All right, everyone have a wonderful day. Thank you. Thank you.